I was with the uh, uh, second battalion going into heading towards uh, Eindhoven. We were close to Eindhoven, and there was a call for a medic, uh, and uh, in company, <clears throat> I told the surgeon I'm going to help check this out, and he said goodbye. <laughs> and uh, I went up there with the edge of the woods, and the company people were in a ditch sort of, and uh, I asked what's the problem. They pointed overhead out to the empty field there, I mean a field, and there were four houses on the other side of that field uh, to a person lying on the ground. And I said, who the, who was that? And he, they said, the Lieutenant Brewer. I said, all right, I might as well go out there. There's no sense crawling out there. It's wide open and uh, he'd been shot through the neck right below the jawline. And uh, I told him I was there and who I was and that I'd take care of him. And I got some, uh, I finally got, he was like death warmed over his yellow jaundice look, you know. And they, I finally found a vein Oh, I had a hard time getting my plasma. We had to mix our own plasma on the spot. And I found a vein and got it in, and then I heard a crack. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, the medic from company e came out with him, and he, I heard a, sh a crack, and I thought they broke the Germans that brought my bottle of plasma after, plasma after I just got the vein and all that sort of thing. I looked, no, it's not broken. I didn't think of being shot, you know. I was thinking of my, my patient and my uh, medicinal equipment. The medic got clipped in the heel, and he ran back to his to the woods again, back to company. E, and I, I told, I was, the dirt was kicking up all around me, and so I told the, so I lie down next to Brewer, and in my best, best uh, bedside manner, I said, "Are you dead?" <laughs> he said, "No, but I don't know why not." He's croaking that out, and I, I said, "Okay, I'll stay with you." And then the uh, two guys came out, and they got hit too, and then the Dutch came out. No guns or anything. They came out to help us. They came running out there. They one of them grabbed up, uh, uh, took uh, Brewer's uh, carbine and fired at the house where the German was, and um, all thirty shots went off at once because he had the double clip and he had fixed it so it would fire automatic. All thirty went. He threw it down, and then they, uh, while I was lying there uh, uh, next to him, I got hit, and uh, it felt like a mule kicked me. And my my I looked back and my calf was laid open like a like a lamb, all the way down the bone, and uh, uh, I so I gave myself a shot of morphine so I wouldn't go into shock, and I now had three other patients plus myself. Well, they put Brewer on his ladder and took him to the he go they take him to the farmhouse where the Germans were. Oh no, where the German was, they took him in the second from the left and he was in the right, from the second floor. And I said, oh, they're going the wrong direction. Well, I got to follow them. And I couldn't walk very well, but there was a wagon run just perfect to the house that he went into. And I was able to get there on my own. And uh, meanwhile, the people were helping the other th two, two or three guys, the Dutch. They didn't, they didn't have any weapons or anything. They're out there in the field getting fired at just like I am. And uh, boy, I had to give them credit. I tell you, they were something. And um, we got into the house and, and um, on the way in, I heard a woman hollering at the other end of the house, tote, tote, that meant somebody's dead. And uh, I don't know who it was. And the thought occurred to me many, many years later that that could have been someone that was killed by the German, by, uh, uh, by us initially when we first attacked across there, or by the, the, their own Dutch people when they fired at that house. But I never did find out. And I, that haunted me to this day. That has haunted me to this day. But anyway, we went into the house and we got everybody patched up. In the meanwhile, the morphine was beginning to work on me. And uh, here this woman had this nice, clean, Dutch clean floor, you know, and I knew something was going to happen. So I, I made a, a symbol of a, of a bowl and a, doing with my hand so it looked like uh, something's happening. She caught on right away, got the bowl, and I didn't mess up her floor. Well, we got all patched up and went, and then they were, we got out to the corner of the crossroad, the little, little street that was right in front of them, and then the one that went to Eindhoven. We were discussing which way to go, and I wanted to go back to Zahn, and they wanted to go, and the doctor showed up from somewhere, I don't know, Dutch doctor. He thought we should go to Eindhoven. Well, what settled was a group of, uh, uh, a platoon of Germans on the other side, back of the house in another field, came along and was firing at us. Well, I couldn't run. They had found a cart, the Dutch people, and put the other guys on the cart and uh, took off towards Zahn. I dove headfirst into this round German-type foxhole, and two, two Dutchmen pulled me out, put me on a wheelbarrow where they get these things, I don't know. All of a sudden there's a wheelbarrow and here they have me and one on each channel, we're running down the 
Street 2, and the Germans stopped firing us. I guess they figured it wasn't worth it. So we got out of that all right. But I went all the way to Bastogne and on to, uh, uh, well, I went to the hospital and came back and I had no clothing other than, the, well, I had my pants and stuff, but I mean, I didn't have my own jump jack. I didn't have anything, but uh, a uh, flight jacket my brother gave me that I met in England. So I had this cloth flight jacket, just like, uh, just like um, um, uh, McAuliffe's. And uh, I was at that time stationed with um, with the regimental head, uh, aid station, which was right across the patio from the divisional McCall's. But anyway, I would uh, when we were being shelled, I could feel the eyes on me. If I hit, got hit, that jacket would have been off of me before I hit the ground. I swear. But we managed to get out of that. That was a fun place. Uh, Bastogne was a little bit chilly, and uh, I almost got killed there too. Uh, I was. We were in a little room there, and uh, I would bend over to bend to tie my shoe, and uh, a shell came through the wall right over where I was, right about where I was up, up when I was sitting up, and it just broke away. It didn't. It didn't explode. A huge, huge pieces. So it must have been a pretty good sized shell, and I think what happened was that somebody that was forced labor had been involved in the manufacture of this shell and uh, sabotaged it. Otherwise, I'd have been on my way to Saturn by now. There were two others. If I remember correctly, yeah, oh, we would have been, you know, many more, many more pieces of us than there were initially. <laughs>